welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the 219th episode of The Simple Sophisticate. And this is the last Monday in July. Can you believe it? Holy cow. Uh, (laughs) The next time we are going to meet on this podcast, it will be August. Anyway, I am excited because in August, before I get into today's episode, is the third annual Simply Luxurious Life French Week. We're going to kick that off on Sunday, August 12th. And I have a full slate of posts and episodes of the podcast interviews for you. So if you want to know a little bit more heads up about what's going to be on the, the, the docket, I guess you could say, for the Simply Luxurious Life French Week, be sure to sign up for the weekly newsletter because next Friday, or this Friday, I should say this Friday, I'm going to share a few of those bits and pieces of news of what to expect, giveaways, things like that. And I'll have a link for that on today's show notes. But to today's episode... We're going to talk about how to cultivate a life for everyday contentment. And it was inspired by an interview um, with an author that wrote The Blue Zones. The, the, the Dan Butner wrote a book, and he's wrote subsequent books um, about the blue zones of happiness. And I was listening to his interview with Marie Forleo, and he just talks so clearly and succinctly about the reality of what surrounds us having such a huge impact on our happiness. So I'm going to use his pillars and then dive deeper into that and expand it to examine it through the lens that we have here of the Simply Luxurious Life. But but before I get to that, today's um, Petit Plaisir is a film that I recently saw. Some of you may already know what I'm talking about. And I highly recommend you go see it if you can find where it's showing or at least wait for it to pop up on Netflix or or Amazon or wherever these films go after they're no longer the theaters. And um, anyway, I'll share with you why I enjoyed it so much and why I would recommend it at the end of today's episode. But let's get into our topic today. I want to begin with a quote with regards to our environment and happiness from Dan Butner, The Blue Zones of Happiness. He states, your environment, where you live and how you shape your surroundings is the biggest, most important, and most impactful thing you can do to favor your own happiness. Now, when I read that quote and heard him talk about this, I zoned in on this whole concept of shaping our environments. And I'll explain more on that in a minute. Have you ever said to yourself, if only I lived, insert your dream destination, I would be happier. First of all, That is normal. That is perfectly human. And it's actually partially correct, according to Dan Butner. Author and researcher that he is shares in his books and his website, Blue Zones, they dial into these blue zones of happiness that while indeed where we live does make a difference to our levels of happiness as we adapt or become conditioned to the habits and ways of life around us, so too do the following things that he shares on his website, which I've linked on the show notes. He shares a list of six things that beyond where we live... These six things affect our happiness. First one, and I don't believe they're in any necessary order, but these are the list of them. Number one, trust. In other words, he states, can you trust your neighbor? So relationships. Two is tolerance. He states, can I live out my values? And we'll talk about more about what that might look like in our episode today. Three is community. Do you have strong social connections? Four is a healthy life expectancy. Five is your GDP. In other words, money does matter to a point. And six is your freedom. Do you have the freedom to do the work that is right for you? In other words, do you get to do what fulfills you? Do you get to... And maybe and we'll t- break that down more specifically in a minute, but the freedom to choose, the freedom to be free and able to do what you can do and are willing to work hard to do. 
So those are his six things that he shares on his website um, with regards to the blue zones, what you can do to increase your happiness beyond where you live. And I'm going to provide a link to that because he dives deeper into all six of them. And you can find that um, link on the show notes. But let's dive into it with regards to living simply luxuriously. As I look around my surroundings and bend, I am examining, asking, and then answering these questions for myself, those six, that list of six things. Can I trust my neighbor? Can I live in my, live out my values? Do I have strong social connections and so on and so forth? And as well, I'm also doing the same thing with places that I've loved to travel to and have considered, okay, what I want to live here, such as the English countryside the French countryside, as both of these excursions to these countries saw my happiness peak for a variety of reasons, and some for for the same reasons, and then there were other reasons why the French countryside piqued my interest, but also why the English countryside is still just really resonating with me when I traveled there, and I'll provide links to both of those if you want to see more of my trip and why it really spoke to me. So I ask myself these questions, as I'm sure you're going to do, when you think about your dream place to live or the place you currently live, and I think that's very important, where you live right now. Can you do these things? Are these things there? But the key is that we can't just pack up tomorrow and head off to Devon, England. We can't do that. Now, some people could. I shouldn't say that. It's a big decision, and it's not always plausible. Simply because we're not feeling content where we are doesn't mean we can't feel content or as happy as we want to be where we are. Making a decision to move isn't something that's done lightly or swiftly by most people, but what we can do, no matter where we live, is tend to what surrounds us right now. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. Keeping in mind the lists that we just talked about, I'd like to break those down in more detail today, paying special attention to specific areas in our lives that we can look at more closely and discover that indeed we can make some improvements to elevate the overall quality of our everyday lives, no matter where we call home. So let's do that. I have 10 different concepts or ideas I want to look at because like I said, as much as we may be able to move even, often we just need to make some changes right at home. So let's look at number one, which is understand how to cultivate healthy relationships. The only person we have control over is ourselves, but it is imperative that we find a community in which we are accepted and supported as we are able to be ourselves. Within this community, this is where you can cultivate and honor the ability for others to be themselves as well. And I've written a detailed post about sharing seven ways to build healthy relationships, and I'll include that link on the, on the show notes. But the key thing here is no matter how much socializing you need, we all need it. And the healthier it is, the better it is for our happiness. And so just examining that and understanding how to build those healthy relationships if we want to improve them or we want to begin to create more of them. So that's number one. Number two is to invest in your social well-being. Now, I talked in detail about this in episode 92, so a few years ago, and I'll provide a link to that on the show notes. But basically, it's this concept first of... of accepting and loving who you are. So, so being your best friend first and then investing in a social network. So this does tie in with number one and not feeling the need to absolutely always have to be in a romantic relationship, understanding that you can be completely content and at peace on your own. And that shouldn't change whether you're in a relationship or not. And that's really our responsibility as individuals. And I, I go into each of those concepts um, in this episode um, that happened a few years ago, 92, if you're interested in checking that out with regards to social well-being. Then we have number three, which is with regards to our surroundings, we want to keep tribalism to a minimum. Now, thinking about what we just talked about, cultivating a strong social well-being, if we only spend time and only live and only congregate with people who think just like we do, look just like us, and do not engage in healthy disagreements or observe others engaging in healthy disagreements, meaning we're seeing other people engage with people with different ideas, but seeing that they can work together and be together, 
We are not practicing tolerance of other ideas, cultures, and people that live differently than we do. While there is a limit to what each of us can tolerate, to understand what is most important as we get to know others outside of our tribe, so to speak, we need to focus on, I think, these particular concepts, regardless of all the differences we may see or perceive. Examining someone's kindness, compassion, right? Examining their ability and our ability to respect others' rights and, and their boundaries. So respecting them as a, simply as a human being. And then the ability for individuals to become self-actualized. And what I mean by that is, regardless of the culture, regardless of, of, of their belief system with regards to their, their spirituality or their background or anything at all, do they believe that other people should have the right to be self-actualized should they choose? So it's this idea of, of just diving deeper into, well, what is it that is, is keeping me from engaging with people? Why am I so whatever? So trying to step outside that tribalism, which has been a hot, hot topic word, I guess you could say, um, as of late. And I think it's important that we examine, are we doing that ourselves? And if we are, maybe that's part of our unhappiness because we're really stuck just in that small little group and we're not considering that there are other people out there that may be perceived as different and and we may perceive that difference as bad when in reality it's just different. And they want (laughs) so many of the similar things that we do, peace, calm, equality, acceptance, and to be loved. So that's number three. Keep Keep tribalism to a minimum. Number four is examine your health and finesse your diet and fitness routines. Now, this is something we've talked about um, quite often on the podcast and on the blog. But with regards to number four of Dan Butner's list, healthy life expectancy, if we have good health, if we're living well and our body is being treated like a temple, then we can be happier because we can fully engage with life and, and really seize those opportunities when they present themselves. So I've included four different either episodes or pod, uh, episodes or blog posts that um, you can dive into. One is about the six pillars of good health. We talked about that recently in episode 212. I also have really specific uh, topics about a walking regimen for your fitness, how to feed your body well, and designing an at-home strength program, which was episode 201. So that's number four. Five, with regards to examining your surroundings to improve your happiness, is to build and strengthen your income and financial future. happiness does tie to how much money we make to a point, as Dan Butner said. In 2012, a study came out that it was $75,000 a year. Um, Obviously, that depends on where you live in the country and in the world. But but based on the United States, that's what they found to be true. If you you could bring in $75,000 a year, a household could bring in that much money, in the average American home, you would be content. And what they mean by that is beyond that, it really did make a difference in your happiness is what they were saying. You can make that much more. They said that's fine, but it's not going to, the money income is not going to make you happier. That's probably changed a little bit since it's been six years ago. But I think understanding that we're being paid for what we're, what we're, so know your value, know your worth, know what you're contributing, not being afraid to step up and say, Hey, you know, this is what I would like this raise, or this is what I feel I've contributed. Um, you know, whatever arena of, of a career you're in, making sure that number one, you're being savvy with your money, letting it work for you. You're mastering it. It's not mastering you. And that you're really stepping into your full potential. And that's a different answer for every single person, but I do have a few posts and I'll include those in the show notes of how to take control of what you can control and make the most of it. Number six is to cultivate a sanctuary that truly feels like home. One of the aspects of my recent trip to France was that I chose rentals, vacation rentals, that would enable me to feel at home as much as possible since I was so far away from my own home and I would be away for quite some time. Now, details do matter. 
less but better matters and choosing decor and, 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 and furniture that enables you to live the life within your home that is not only functional but comfortable when we do what we love is important. It really does have effect on our, our happiness and our contentedness. And so some takeaways for me, what I'm going to be focusing on, and maybe this will spark some ideas for you, but some things that I'm going to be considering, because I really have not, I really haven't dove into the decor in my rental that I've been staying in the past three years. I literally sold my home that I had invested a lot of time and energy and money into over the last nine years. And I took with me what I loved and what I could keep And I just decorated it basically immediately when I walked in the door and it worked out very well. But I've been throwing myself into so many other things that my decor has been, hasn't been a priority. But I'm going to shift that because what I've noticed on this trip that I just took is it had a huge effect on me and it was very positive. I've included a link to one of the rentals that I stayed at in Gord, France. And if you haven't checked it out, I encourage you to do so. I stayed there for a week and it truly felt like home in so many ways. So a few of the things I'm going to work on adding to my home over the next few months is simply adding more framed photos of the travels that I've had the opportunity to take recently and, and images with my dogs. I'm also going to try to add some more warmth to my rental with more um, curtains, specifically linen curtains, things that I can actually take with me should I be um, moving to another rental or buying a home soon so that it's still an investment item. It's still something that I love and I don't have to leave it behind. And also, and I've been doing this, this one's the one thing I have been doing over the past few years. I've been making sure my kitchen is stocked with the utensils that I need to cook the meals I love. And I've just been adding a few things as of late as I prep for the first season of the Simply Luxurious Kitchen. And just stepping into that kitchen when you know that you have the tools that you need to make the food that you enjoy eating, it's just, it's a comfort. And that's, so that's one thing I'm continuing to do. And I'm also going to be con- considering furnishing my deck with comfortable furniture for those quiet pursuits, such as reading in the morning or the evening in the summer, and also more of a welcoming environment for dinner parties out on the deck in the patio in the summertime. I love those kind of gatherings. So just some ideas that I'm thinking about. And you too can think about your home and think about how, where do I feel more at peace, most at peace? Why, do, why don't I feel at peace in this, in this room or in this space? And what can I do to spruce it up? And I'll provide a few links to um, give you inspiration on cultivating a grown-up's living space, how to make simple home touch-ups. Those are very specific posts that I've written in the past, and they'll be on the show notes for you to check out if you're interested. You can also, if you have my first book, Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, A Modern Woman's Guide... I have dedicated an entire chapter to cultivating your sanctuary. So if you haven't picked up that book and and want to dive deeper into it, that first book is linked on my blog. It's also on Amazon and in local bookstores, um, and you can check that out. So that's number six, cultivate a sanctuary that feels like home. Number seven, spend time regularly enjoying hobbies that enable you to be fully present. When we engage in hobbies that will allow separation from our work world, even our social worlds, as much as we personally need, we actually are giving our mind and our being a rest. And when we let our minds rest, we reduce our stress and thereby increase potential ideas and problem solving to happen naturally. I've included an episode that I did last year on the importance of having deliberate rest regularly in our lives. And I've included that link on today's show notes under number seven, because the power of rest is often sometimes dismissed and it shouldn't be. It's something that it's free fuel, I guess we could say that really helps improve the quality of our lives. So that's number seven. Number eight, be conscious of the media that you expose your mind to. So again, that's environment that we we are in can either help us improve our contentment or not. And what I mean by this is we may not be able to control the world around us, but we can control whether or not we put ourselves in a situation to consume information that isn't what we know will increase the quality of our lives. Last week, I wrote a post about giving our brain a chance to calm down regularly and ideas that I'm doing in my own life with regards to taking in the news and information and um, maybe some suggestions that you're going to maybe want to incorporate into your life. Because 
the more we're aware of what those outside sources do to us, um, the more we can make sure we tailor them to be most beneficial. Number nine is come up with daily, weekly, seasonal, and annual rituals you enjoy and will look forward to. Now, I have talked about rituals throughout the, the, the many years that we've talked um, on the blog, also in the last four years that we've had this podcast. So daily rituals, holiday rituals, weekend rituals, afternoon rituals, morning rituals to help start your day well, designing a great week, and how to savor the reasons for the seasons. All those are individual posts for you to dive into to help you see maybe how you could finesse your days, your weeks, your months to really work the best for you. And again, give you something to look forward to. That's number nine. Number 10, last but not least, take time to explore what you are truly capable of and then can offer that to the world. The easiest way I have found to grow is to follow my curiosity. After all, when we follow what catches our attention and we wish to learn more about, it doesn't feel like effort. It feels like play in many ways. In fact, such efforts may actually fuel us. And when we find what we love, what we enjoy doing, our contentment rises. Fred Rogers of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood once shared about people who were successful, quote, The thing I remember best about successful people I've met all through the years is their obvious delight in what they're doing, and it seems to have very little to do with worldly success, end quote. And if we can find a place in this world, whether it is in the town we currently call home, or if we have to move to make such a career possible, our happiness will soar. So figure out what it is that you love doing, are capable of doing, and can offer to the world. It doesn't mean you won't face obstacles to make it a reality, but you will be able to work through those obstacles because you sincerely care and and are passionate and enjoy what you're doing. Number 10, I think, is often the the, the, the hardest one to, to really hone in on. But once you figure it out, it's the easiest one to really turn your world into a very contented place because you have a direction. You know what you want to do and give and you have an idea of what your role, so to, so to speak, in this world is. Now that may change from time to time through decades, through different chapters in your life. But in, when you throw yourself into that, it's, it's truly this intrinsic happiness. This, and that's why I like the word contentment. It's something we cultivate within ourselves and we just keep diving into it and be, and gaining more energy and more fuel from it. All right. So today, what, what I would really encourage us all to do, including myself is consider what is surrounding us structurally look around and see what is surrounding you with regards to the house you live in your physical workspace Look around socially what surrounds you, the people you spend time with, the concepts and and, and ideas that are swirling about around you, the media, and also what you see and what you read. Examine also the ideas that are shared by others and the culture you call home. Does it work with you? Can you be tolerant enough to really be who you want to be and offer what you want to offer and be yourself And, and what you have accepted that's out of your control. Are you okay with that? Often much of what is in our control can be improved simply by being conscious of what influences our environment. And so often it is the stepping away from our everyday environment, whether because of a weekend getaway or a trip to another country, because when we do those step, when we do step away, when we return, we see the differences or we see wow, I I blindly was accepting or allowing this to happen and it really does have an effect on me. And we realize that life can go on in a variety of different ways and go on very well or not very well. And we have the choice to accept those things that are working well and not let those other things that aren't working well stay in our lives. So remember the power that you have to construct how your world unfolds on a daily basis. You probably will find you have more control than you realize. And when you realize that, more contentment can be yours. 
I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. I've been thinking about that whole concept over this past week on the blog a lot. I love Bend. I moved here for a reason. But there were a lot of things whenever I travel that I bring home and I'm like, wait a second, there are a few more things I can do to improve this and I don't need all these other things. Da, da, da. You don't have to step away that, that in that way. Often it's just that we have to remind ourselves to take a conscious look and hopefully today is that opportunity to do that. I've included three different episodes and po- uh, blog posts that tie into this concept um, to offer some deeper examination. So seven ways to become what you truly were meant to be. Um, I have another episode 163 that's about how learning how to truly savor everyday moments and watch it every and elevate your everyday life. And also a post just about the concept we're talking about here. What surrounds you? What truly surrounds you? All right. I'll be back in just a bit with this week's Petit Plaisir. <music> So this week's Petit Plaisir is a documentary that was released just a few months ago, and it's focused on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, the PBS children's uh, show that aired from 1968 to 2000. And the film is called Won't You Be My Neighbor? I recently watched this, and, or, well, let me play for you the trailer, and then I'll talk about my thoughts on the other side. <laughs> A television program for children made its unauspicious debut on station WQED in Pittsburgh. Its host, Fred Rogers. Mr. Rogers? Yeah. I want to tell you something. What would you like to tell I like you. I like you, my dear. Thank you very much for telling me that. You take all of the elements that make good television and do the exact opposite. You have Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Low production values, simple set, unlikely star, yet... It worked. Love. I've always felt that I didn't need to put on a funny hat or jump through the hoop to have a relationship with a child. He was always trying to get a message across in every show. A week on death. What does assassination mean? On divorce. Some people get married and after a while they're so unhappy that they don't want to be married anymore. He was radical. I know everyone says that, but he was radical. They didn't want black people to come and swim in their swimming pools. My being on the program was a statement for Fred. A neighborhood was a place where, at times, that you felt worried, scared, unsafe, would take care of you. He had a singular vision of kindness and love. Love is at the root of everything. All learning, all relationships, love or the lack of it. Children have very deep feelings, just the way everybody does. There must be times when you do feel blue. I'm not feeling blue right now, though. Me neither. (laughs) Won't you be my neighbor? Well, I suppose it's an invitation. It's an invitation for somebody to be close to you. The greatest thing that we can do is to help somebody know that they're loved and capable of loving. Won't you please, won't you please, please won't you be my neighbor? So Won't You Be My Neighbor is the documentary that is our petite plaisir today. But on my Instagram feed, I am I shared that I went to the film this last weekend. And so many of you shared your own comments and experiences with the film, but also your experiences with Mr. Rogers as a child. And so I just wanted to share with you what I wrote on my Instagram feed, and I'll include a link to it on the show notes if you'd like to check out the comments. I'll just read you my caption. Yesterday afternoon, this was last Friday, talking about last Thursday, I took in a matinee showing of a documentary I had been wanting to see since I learned of it a few months ago. Won't You Be My Neighbor takes viewers behind the scenes of the publicly broadcast children's show and its creator, Fred Rogers, which debuted in 1968 and aired its last show on December 1st, 2000. 
As someone who watched Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood as a child, it was one of the two shows my parents let me watch as a young, impressionable child. I do remember Daniel the Tiger, who was the most gentle soul, and all of the other make-believe puppets. Watching the film, sharing the songs, and now listening to them as an adult brought tears to my eyes multiple times as the concepts that he valued, accepting one another exactly as we are, love being the strongest and most powerful emotion of our world if only we would let it shine, knowing that each of us is special just by being ourselves. As the film explains, the being special is not that we are entitled, but that we matter and that all people matter. A love for all humanity and a love for ourselves. An acceptance, in other words, as well as the importance and value of silence and solitude in our lives are concepts I have found to be fundamentally true if only we have the courage to embody and thus exemplify them in our everyday lives. If you have the opportunity to see the film, I highly recommend it. And be sure to bring a few tissues with you. I want to say thank you, Mr. Rogers, for being exactly who you were. We needed your lessons as children, and we will continue to need to be reminded of them as adults. Look for this film in your theaters. It did. It actually did show beyond just our boutique theaters here in Bend. It showed in our major theaters, so it may hop into the major theaters in your area as well. But it's been in the theaters for about two months now, so it may be soon moving into um, video format. I'm not sure. I'll provide a link to the primary homepage of the, of the video, though, so you can check that out and see if you can find it in your area. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Plaisir, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each Monday's podcast where I'll recommend a book, a film, or a recipe, anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. Thank you for tuning in today. I also want to share one more bit of information or news. We just began production. I say we. We is me and the boys. <laughs> production just began, though, on the Simply Luxurious kitchen which will premiere for its first season on saturday september 8th it's a vodcast so a video um, podcast you can subscribe to it separately on itunes it's already up for um, subscription if you're interested so you don't miss an episode i'll be sharing more about it in the coming weeks but um oh, i'm having so much fun and i cannot wait to share it with you have a wonderful week and thank you very much for tuning in Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, stop by the blog, thesimplyluxuriouslife.com, or pre-order Living the Simply Luxurious Life, Making Your Every Days Extraordinary and Discovering Your Best Self, which will be released on November 13th, 2018. You can also pick up my first book, Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, A Modern Woman's Guide, which is now available in paperback, as well as ebook and audio version on Audible, iTunes, and Amazon, or wherever ebook and audiobooks are sold. To stay caught up on the most recent episodes of the podcast, blog post, and to receive exclusive news as well as an extra dose of inspiration to jumpstart your weekend, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Life's weekly newsletter, which arrives in your inbox each Friday to enjoy with a hot cup of tea or a morning cup of coffee. Until next Monday, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bonjourne!